think you really ever know kind of what it takes uh, fully to, to win a championship until you do it and you kind of see it played out. And I got, I got a front row seat to watch it happen uh, on my teammates in, in their hearts and, and in my own as we you know made the journey in the postseason and, and won those critical games and those tough games where you're coming back from being down. And uh, you know all that stuff, I think it builds a, a kind of sort of metal in you and a, a, you know, a confidence that even when things aren't going well, um, you can turn it around. And, and you kind of know the, the uh, attitude you need to take into that. And for me, that's the whole goal here. You know, I'm not going to be satisfied until we, we, you know, I'm not going to be satisfied with making the playoffs here. I'm not going to be satisfied with winning the NLCS here. It's, it's the championship. That's what it's all about. So it's about executing that plan, that goal. You know, and, and until it comes down to that last out, you know, you haven't won anything. And uh, I think to, to be able to help uh, my teammates, you know, kind of just convey that, that that I that experience that I got this year, I think is going to serve me really well uh, if we're able to make the playoffs, and uh, you know hopefully I can pass some of that on to to some of these guys, and they they experienced it this year, you know they already know how, you know how to get there. I think it was a um, you know maybe a year earlier than everybody kind of expected, but now it's going to be expected, and and we understand that as players, and uh, it all it comes down to uh, really executing when the time comes and playing good when it counts, you know, and that's what it's going to all, all be about. Terrific. Thank you, Jed. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Ben. Congratulations and welcome again to you and your family. Thank you. Um, you know, stay home and, and play with play with toys with your kids and open presents. Welcome back to Cubs added super utility man Ben Zobrist with a four-year $56 million deal. The 34-year-old started last season in Oakland before being dealt to the Royals where he was a key cog in Kansas City's championship run. Zobrist will have a familiar face in manager Joe Madden. The two arrived in Tampa together back in 2006 which was Zobrist's rookie season and Madden's first as manager with the Rays. And the Cubs have traded three-time All-Star Starling Castro to the Yankees, where he'll be their second baseman. Castro, of course, lost his starting spot last season at shortstop for his Cubs career. The 25-year-old hit 281 with 62 home runs and 363 RBIs over six seasons. In return, the Cubs get reliever Adam Warren and infielder Brendan Ryan. The Yankees will pay the remaining $38 million on Castro's contract. We couldn't have uh, made this free agent signing without this trade and would not have made this trade without uh, without the free agent signing. So first first and foremost, I want to thank Starlin for all his contributions as a Cub. You know, it's been uh, an incredible nine-year run for him in this organization. He really grew up in this organization, went through a lot here, made tremendous positive contributions to, to help get us to where we are. That said, you know, it was an opportunity to, to trade essentially as, as we look at it to trade Starlin um, for Ben Zobrist and Adam Warren and that's something that in our situation um, made a lot of sense for us um, with how how we're constituted in 2016 and, and going forward. Here in Nashville for day two of the winter meetings alongside our CSN Cubs insider Patrick Mooney and the Cubs making some fireworks here on day two. Just tie a bow on what this means for Castro and his days as a Cub. Well, I think Starlin Castro is someone who had been a lightning rod for a long time and that a lot of that was probably unfair. Uh, he was thrust into the situation uh, at the age of, age of 20, I believe. Now has almost a thousand hits before his 26th birthday. And I think there are times where he's underappreciated. There are times where he lost focus in the field and deserved that. But I think ultimately uh, it, you look at the end of Starlin's career in Chicago and just the way he handled Addison Russell taking over at shortstop. Uh, uh, taking the news from from Joe Madden and really reinventing himself to a point where the Cubs don't get to the NLCS without Starlin Castro being this dynamic second baseman and certainly the Yankees had been on him for a long time they noticed that transition they thought he would fit well uh, in the Bronx and so Starlin Castro always wanted to be there when when the Cubs turned to be on that team that won the World Series he doesn't get to that point but he certainly you know a, it was a huge part 
of building the Cubs back up into a playoff team faster than anyone thought that last year. In response to this, the Cubs were able then to go after Ben Zobrist, a guy that they had been looking at for quite some time and certainly one that I think Theo Epstein, when we just talked to him, is very excited to see what he can do with the rest of this Cubs a roster. Yeah, I think if you look at I think Theo made a great point. Look at what Ben Zobers did in October against the best pitching in the world. He helped the Royals you know, win a title, and that's really why he's coming here now. And that, that's obviously been the appeal that people have talked about for a long time. There's this long-standing relationship with Joe Madden who knows how to put him in the right places. And he lives not somewhere here, not too far from, <laughs> right. from here. So obviously that's a close uh, trip to Chicago. So uh, this is one of you know his top place to come to. Uh, and I think it's a really good kind of short-term fit now, and I think Starlin Castro is going to have a really nice, long career. Yes. But I think the Cubs were in a place where they could afford to wait on Starlin or figure out whether, you know, which Starlin was going to be there uh, next year. So the Cubs are really, you know, going for it uh, in 2016 while still, you know, maintaining some flexibility, uh, you know, down the road because they still have this opening in center. I think there's still some, you know, big moves they have in mind, and we'll see if they can pull them off. Thanks, guys. Another name that has surfaced in trade talks is Javier Baez. But with the acquisition of Ben Zobris, it appears the Cubs will hold on to the young slugger. Theo Epstein was asked about the possibility of Ben Zobris being a mentor to Baez in the upcoming season. Going forward, I think long term, this will this will um, provide a little bit of opportunity, more opportunity for um, for Javi Baez as well with, with Zobris flexibility and ability to play all, all over the field. I think, you know, we're, if you look at the corner outfield, you know, a lot of days we're going to have um, Kyle Schwarber out there who's just learning the position and, and Jorge Soler who, um, you know, hasn't quite managed to play the full 162 game season yet, but I think he will um, um, to go with Coghlan. So I think, you know, Dobris protects us all over the infield as well as the outfield. This really fits on our club. It was big news two years ago when Jose Abreu defected from Cuba to come and play baseball for the White Sox. He's literally been a big hit from day one of his major league career and a key piece to the Sox lineup. And now Abreu will return to his native country as part of Major League Baseball's Goodwill Tour next week. Free agent Alexi Ramirez, who played for the White Sox after leaving Cuba seven years ago, will reportedly also be part of the group. For more on the White Sox, here's Chuck Garfine from the Winter Meetings. White Sox fans were not happy to say the least about the 2015 season, and a lot of the criticism was directed at Robin Ventura, who admits that this is pretty much a make-or-break season for him entering the final year of his contract. And after three straight losing seasons, I asked Ventura if he felt like he was almost going to get fired after the 2015 season. That's always a possibility. I, I think anytime you're in, in this position, that, that comes up and, uh, you know, people talk about it, but it doesn't change. For me, it doesn't change I never ever asked for an extension in the last year of my contract as a player and I'm not going to change that way now it's, it's just part of going in and it, it is what it is the first position the White Sox were able to fix this offseason was catcher they said goodbye to Tyler Flowers and brought in Alex Avila and Deanna Navarro Flowers is set to sign with the Braves the Sox pitching staff loved him the problem was the bat and I asked Don Cooper if he was surprised the White Sox let him go. No, not really, because people come and go. I mean, this is not like Burley leaving, you know. I mean, Tyler, T Tyler did a nice job framing pitches behind the plate, you know, and he certainly caught our guys well. Uh, but Tyler had trouble hitting the ball. Cooper took the blame when asked about the struggles of Jeff Samar, just saying, quote, I failed. But there's more to the story than that. Well, I think the elephant in the room with Jeff was uh, he put a lot of pressure on himself. And I know some of our other pitchers did also because we were having trouble. And we they had to be really good. I, I, I think, you know, he, him betting on himself for a long time uh, and knowing that this was the big year, so to speak, I, I think he put a little too much pressure on himself. When I sit at home and think about baseball, it's one that I say, son of a gun. You know, I, 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 I me, we, we just didn't get it done the way we want to. Covering the White Sox at the winter meetings, Chuck Garfine, Comcast Sportsnet. Thanks, Chuck.
Chuck. 109, you know, that's what that meant. So you're saying Uncle Lottie didn't fly him too? Because that's his, his his buddy that flies him around the country. It wasn't Uncle Lottie. That no, I don't know who Uncle... No, no, no. Well, he's going to be Uncle John Lackey and he'll yeah, that, be splitting <laughs> show flights now with the show money. That ain't bad. <laughs> so where where else did you go? You said East Coast, West Coast. Uh, uh, you can leave the wedding part out. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> we... Uh, we actually went we went and visited New York, uh, which I think has been reported, and we went and visited San Francisco. But we wanted to get a taste of both of those places. I, I, I loved both of those teams when I looked at them. Uh, I think they're both going to be really great teams. And, uh, you know, I, obviously I believe that, that the Cubs were going to be good too, but the, the winning is important to me. And so I was looking at those teams for that. They put great offers on the table. And... Um, you know, it, it it was a very tough decision, but in the end, I think I think the proximity ended up winning out, and um, you know we're just thrilled. Yeah. Well, we got a new we got a new addition to the family, Blaze Royal Zobras, who was mo most popular non-born baby because we, we we weren't sure when it was gonna be born or she was gonna be born during the series. Uh, she's got a new home here in Chicago. How awesome was this? Uh, it was unbelievable. She was born right here in Nashville, actually, after the World Series. Uh, my wife barely made it through the World Series without delivering, <laughs> and then. We flew back, got in, and less than 24 hours later, she went into labor, and we had a uh, little Blaze Royal. So, uh, you know, we joked about, uh, everybody's joking about changing her name to Blaze Cup. No, we're not going to do that. How about Blaze Wrigley? <laughs> we're not going to do that, <laughs> although I love Wrigley Field. Uh, but it's it's always going to be a special memory in our in our family, our career. Um, she was a major league storyline for yes. the World Series. and and uh, it'll be a fun memory for all of us. I mean, the Zobers, you do everything in bunches. You win World Series rings, you have babies. I mean, anything else happens yeah, in you know what? 24 you hours? You hit some bunches hey, too, Chris. You don't plan it that way, though, let's be <laughs> honest, because I, I was a little racked with nerves uh, throughout the process. Right. By the way, we know we've had your wife on the show. We were we love having you. We thought maybe she'd want to show up. But you, you got to right. ask. Well, come we on, do have that. It, 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 she's got to know this is an open. Well, you have my wife's cell phone. The phone you don't have Juliana's cell phone in your in your cell phone. Well, it, hey, I, I can talk to her about it. Maybe she'll. <laughs> is come she watching up. right now up there in the suite? I don't know. Maybe. Juliana, if you want to drop by at some point during the show, just for a drive by, just to say <laughs> hi. Stay up there, Juliana. Stay with the kids. Give creepy great. Uncle Kevin a hug. I know it's it is. four miles away from the set. This is a big <laughs> hotel. Stay cozy. Hey, uh, Ben, congratulations, man. Thank Thanks you. for hanging out with us. Thank enjoy. You. I'm sure you're going to enjoy the off season. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Thank you, guys. All right, Ben Zobris, there he is, your newest Chicago Cub. All right, let's continue on with more news of the day. The world-renowned snow biz. We had a trade. Pop All right, you know, it wasn't just the Diamondbacks making moves. Cubs made uh, two interesting moves yesterday. Joe Madden's leather jacket is ready for some <laughs> night moves uh, this week. 34-year-old <laughs> two-time All-Star Zen Bro Zobris in. 25-year-old three-time All-Star Starlin Castro out. KB, Cubs get better here with Zobrist? Yeah, they got better in the short run. I had no idea until looking at Zobrist's numbers how dominant he's been at his position over the last five years. Second Where best you been? OPS Where you been, for, KB? for I know, Well, I didn't know his OPS was second best in, over the last five years for second baseman. That's outrageously good. So you plug him in right now. He's back with a manager who he's comfortable with, a guy they started their their big league careers with uh, uh, Madden as a manager, him as a player. Um, obviously feels comfortable there. Had a lot of choices, places he could have gone for even more money, mm -hmm. including right here in Washington. Mm -hmm. They've got to feel the sting of that. So I think this clearly makes them better. And once again, you know, it's not about what you do two and three years down the road. It's about what you're going to do right now. And well, the Cubs are in it. Maybe to win likes it. another move for right now. How about you, Frank? Yeah, hell, hell, the gang's all here because remember, Theo Epstein went out and signed John Lackey. We know that they already have John Lester there as well, Zorbris, and uh, of course, Joe Madden have been together for so many years in Tampa. Here's my thing with Castro. You know, he's been an all-star three times, and he's only 25. So for the fact that they're looking to trade him, I understand they did bring in Addison Russell to play shortstop. The move makes so much sense, and one of the Chicago writers referred to Zorbris as a the Swiss Army knife of the uh, Chicago Cubs now. He could play so many different positions, and look at what he did in the postseason, especially in the World Series. He came through in a big way. And also, Tony, little-known fact, that leather coat that Madden was wearing, they made that out of the snake they found in the clubhouse. So everything <laughs> all comes together for the Cubs. I got that. You're not I'm, getting I'm a little concerned. That, right? we, there's been so much talk <laughs> about age, and especially signing aging pitchers. Well, you're bringing in a guy who's going to be 35 for next season. They signed him through the year when he's going to be 39. And the only concern is, are the young Cubs players ready to win right now? So clearly they're making this in win-right-now mode. 
but the young players, they're close. I think they're a little ahead of schedule, but are they truly in win-now mode right now? And, and the question is, is it going to match up? By the time the younger players are truly ready to win a World Series, is Zobris going to still be able to produce for them? Well, to that question, I think you had an answer. Game one in the NLCS, yes, they're ready to win right now, and that answer changed <laughs> by the time you got to game four. <laughs> Kalisha. Castro's